YouTube, it's Jerry with Sky Management. Today we're gonna to be taking a little side project in my wood shop. My mom bought these uh, little wooden cigar boxes from a garage sale for about a buck a piece. They're nice little boxes. Uh, bought a whole bunch of them. <laughs> Probably like 30 to 40 of these boxes. Uh, can we resell them? Yeah, you can sell them for a few bucks, but what I'm gonna do is take one of these and put some uh, fractal burn on it, give it some lightning etch on it, clean it up, and see if we can't turn around and sell these and make some, make some real money. So a little side project, we're gonna need to do this. Uh, in order, order to burn this, we're gonna have to mix up some mixture. So basically to make this mixture, I like to take a couple of tablespoons of pure baking soda, and I'm gonna put that into here. And then I'm gonna take this and fill it up with hot water. You need to make sure the reason why you do it hot is so all this can get stirred in there. Once it's all stirred in, you are now ready to apply. Uh, we're also going to have to take the uh, the finish off of these boxes because you can't burn it with the finish. These already have a have a polyurethane finish on them. So uh, here's a quick and easy way to take it off. Hey, brother, you mind if you uh, take care of this for me? Yeah, no problem, brother. Throw it in the blasting cabinet and get it cleaned up in no time. One box, all cleaned up and ready to burn. Here you go, brother. Thanks, bro. Now that we've got this all sandblasted off, we're ready to go ahead and apply a coating onto the top of it. Uh, I didn't have them sandblast out the inside because we're only gonna be doing the burn on the outside. So uh, we're gonna start with the top, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take this and put the solution that you saw we mixed up on top of here. And it's gotta sit for a little bit, let it absorb into the wood pores and then we're gonna apply a little bit more, and then we're gonna start the burn. So we've got this solution that we mixed up inside, and it's all hot. I went ahead and put it in the microwave, just made it real hot, so then made sure it all got mixed in there good. And then I'm gonna take that and just simply apply this very thick over this and let it sit in here and soak. And we're gonna do this over the whole thing. I like to let it sit for about five minutes. Once it's on there real thick, let it get absorbed in, and then go ahead and right before we're ready to go, we'll apply a little bit more to the top. If there's areas you're not wanting this lightning to go, you can not apply this on there. It'll help track it, keep it where it wants to go, but I kind of want to just let it have free reign to go wherever it feels like it wants to go. So we're going to cover the rest of it and then we'll let it sit. What I'm going to be using to do this, I built a box. You can do this with a transformer out of a neon sign. It does the, little, the finer lines or we've taken a, uh, it's, not, it's not plugged in, this is dangerous so you don't want to be messing with this. Transformer out of microwave power and wired it in using some thick cable, put some clamps on the end, and I have made a couple of uh, copper end pieces to allow for better conductivity into the, into the wood. And so as a safety measure, I don't have this plugged in. When I get ready to go, I will have the lid on this so that I don't accidentally touch anything. I will have the leads away from each other. I will put a piece of hard surface down before I do this so that it doesn't have any way to conduct through a piece of stone that I've got that I'll use instead of wood or carpet. Then when I'm ready to do it, I will plug it in and would stand back, place the, those where they need to go, and then you hit this switch and stand here to where when it gets done burning where I want it to burn, I'll kill the switch, unplug it just to make sure that there's no 
chance of any electricity being passed through before I end up touching these leads and moving them. It's very dangerous. If you end up touching these leads both together, you're going to fry yourself. People have died doing this, so you've got to be careful. I've let it sit for about five minutes and I've gone ahead and positioned my leads where I want to try to, to have this done. I have not plugged this in and have not turned it on yet. So everything is still exactly as it should be. I'm going to go ahead and take a little more of this since I'm just going to be working on the top and I'm going to apply it again a little more to the top and kind of connect these two where I want the lightning to try to work its way across here to burn. What it's going to do is it should try to connect power is going to try to connect between these two and it's going to burn across the top of this. So I'm going to put down the camera and get it set up so that I can have both hands in full concentration to do this. I've unplugged and turned off the machine and picked up my camera so I can kind of show you the preliminary here. This back lead back here started trying to track around the edge back there, but this front one here, it started doing what it was supposed to. It's kind of sporadic, you know. This doesn't look great per se right now. I'm going to move the leads and try again from a couple of different angles. Once it dries, that's when the real magic happens because you're going to sand part of this and you'll see the little fine little lightning tree-like hairs that come out from between these things before we finish it. So it's a little bit of an ugly duckling in between phase right now, but I'm going to go ahead and move it. As you can see, it's it started doing it down here and it's even just picked up a few random spots just out in the middle of nowhere. They're trying to connect these two points. So it's, it's completely random. You have ways that you can try to, to track it, make it do what you want it to do, but for now it's starting off pretty good. I'm going to move them and hit it a couple more times. All right, now that we've got this thing zapped, on all sides here. You can see we've kind of done some of them have been a little bit. We did other sides, did a lot more. This thing is still, sorry, it's got a lid. It didn't really do the inside because I didn't get the inside wet. So it didn't really track anything on the inside of the box. <clears throat> Obviously if the inside was wet, yeah, it would probably go to the inside too. But I mean, it has to dry. So I'm gonna give it a day to dry and we're gonna sand the whole thing and you'll see what this can look into before we stain it, and then I'll show you how it's gonna look like after we stain it. We left this out here for a day, so it's good and dry. It does have a lot of this charcoal that's dirty on top of here. And so now is what I like to call the great reveal, where we get to sand off the top and kind of show you what, what it's gonna look like close to the finished product. And then of course, we're gonna be staining and putting some polyurethane on it. So come on in closer here, and I'll show you how this, how this looks uh, as we get to sand it off. Even after just our first pass through this, you can see that a lot of these little fine lines and everything are starting to come out and it's starting to eat away a lot of that uh, charcoal on this. So we're going to get the rest of this thing ironed out. Now that we've got everything sanded off, we've got a spot set up here to go ahead and, and put some stain on this. I personally like to use an all-in-one type system to do projects like this because I don't have the time to sit there and stain it, wait, and go back and polyurethane it. So, I have pre-mixed up some stain into some polyurethane, just put a little bit of regular stain color to kind of make it to where I think it's gonna look good into this. You can buy pre-mixed stuff or you can do it separately. It's completely up to you. Just make sure it's stirred well. This again already has a polyurethane in it. So usually one, possibly two coats are really all you're gonna to need to do something like this. If you're gonna do two coats, you will lightly sand in between. But we got the rest of the box all sanded off. It looks really nice. It still functions like a box. And we're going to go ahead and have you come in close and we'll begin to show you how this is going to cover. Now by doing the stain and polyurethane both, 
fill in this parts that are still deep charcoal you can let it fill in there and it will settle down in there and cover that and just wipe off as much of the excess as you as you want to or can to get it as dark as you want the more coats you do when you've got this pre-mixed stuff the darker that it's going to get when it's all done and the type of wood that you end up going with is going to make a difference as far as to how dark the stain ends up being on top of this but we'll go ahead and do the rest of the box as you can see it looks like it's coming out pretty much like it's expected to come out then we'll get the rest of the box and then we'll show you the finished product Here we have the finished product next to the one of the originals to give an idea of what it looks like. Uh, to each their own. Some people may say this looks worse than this and they'd prefer it like this. The nice part about these is that one, they're, every one of them is unique. So no matter how you end up working it, they all end up coming out different with the different patterns that are on it. And it just makes it, uh, makes it fun and unique. Again, it ended up being a little darker than I would have liked, but that's just how a lot of people have been wanting these darker and instead of this oak looking color they'd like it to be darker again we left the inside of it just raw uh it still says the cigar cigar box stamp on the inside of there just because it's a cedar part of the box and makes it nice so uh, all in all this is a nice little project it's kind of fun something fun to do uh, we're going to take these again we can, we've accumulated several of these a whole bunch of these we're going to rip them off, do some lighter, some darker, some shiny, some not, and then turn around and sell these as custom boxes uh, that people can use for keepsakes and whatnot. So a little fun project to, to work out in case you decide to give it a try. you got to be extra careful out there.